Welcome to lesson 10. In this lesson, we're going to talk about code formatting. Now, this is covered by chapter 3 of the course textbook, which you can find online for free at inventwithpython.com beyond. Now, code formatting is applying a set of rules to source code to give it a certain appearance. Although this is completely unimportant to the computer that's parsing your program, code formatting is really vital for readability, which is necessary for maintaining your code, because if your code is difficult for humans to understand, it will be hard to fix bugs or add new features. So formatting code isn't a mere cosmetic issue. In fact, Python's readability as a programming language is a critical reason for its immense popularity. Now in the next lesson, I'll introduce you to Black, which is an automatic code formatting tool that we can use to format our code into a consistent readable style. But in this lesson, I'm going to talk to you about all the different code formatting rules and why we have them. Let me go ahead and open up a terminal window and launch the Python interactive shell. Now we can write code in many ways that result in identical behavior. For example, I can write a list with a single space after each comma and use one qu uh, kind of quote character consistently. How about spam equals a list with the strings dog, cat, and mouse. But even if we wrote the list with a varying number of spaces and quote styles, we'd still have syntactically valid Python code. I could write it like this, spam equals a bracket and then a space there and another space with a comma but then no space after the comma. And then I could suddenly start using double quotes. Now these two lines of code do the exact same thing. Uh, programmers might prefer the former approach because they like the visual separation and the uniformity of the uh, quote styles. But programmers sometimes choose the latter because even though it's not readable, it's easy to write. Now, beginners often ignore code formatting because they're focused on just learning programming concepts and language syntax, but it's really valuable for beginners to establish good code formatting habits. Uh, programming is difficult enough, and writing understandable code for others, or just for yourself in the future, can minimize this difficulty. Now, although you might start out coding on your own, programming is often a collaborative activity. If several programmers are working on the same source code files, and they each write in their own style, the code can become an inconsistent mess, even if it runs without error. Or worse, the programmers will constantly be reformatting each other's codes to their own style, wasting time and causing arguments. Deciding whether to, say, put one or zero spaces after a comma is really a matter of personal preference. Uh, these style choices can be much like deciding which side of the road to drive on. It doesn't matter if people drive on the right side of the road or on the left side, as long as everyone consistently drives on the same side. Now let's talk about horizontal spacing and then go into vertical spacing. And the first thing I want to talk about horizontal spacing is indentation. And here the main rule that you want to follow is to use space characters for indentation and not tab characters. And the reason is that these two characters behave differently. A space character is always rendered on the screen as a string value with a single space like this. But a tab character, which is rendered as a string value containing this escape sequence slash t, this is more ambiguous. Tabs often, but not always, render as a variable amount of spacing, so the following text begins at the next tab stop. And the tab stops are usually, but not always, positioned every eight spaces across the width of a text file or a screen. You can see this variation in the following example. I'm going to run hello there, friend. And then I will have a slash in for a new line, followed by how are you. And when I run this code, you can see that there is a new line that puts this second line on the next line. And each of these spaces is one space. But if I use tabs instead of spaces, 
and then add a new line in the middle. You can see that each of these tab characters renders as a different amount of spaces. And that's because the tab character just renders as many spaces are as needed to go to the next tab stop position. So this tab is three spaces, but this tab is five spaces. And because tabs can represent a varying width of white space, you should avoid using them in your source code, especially for indentation. Uh, most code editors and IDEs will automatically insert four or eight space characters when you press the tab key instead of entering a tab character. Now, as for length of each indentation level, the common practice in Python is to have four spaces per level of indentation. So for example, I could create a function called get cat amount. And you can see my editor has automatically inserted four spaces. In fact, if I highlight these, this is sublime text. It gives you a little visual indi indication that these are four spaces. So even if I, I could either press the space key four times, and that would insert four spaces, or I could press the tab key once, but as you can see, it still entered four space characters there. And so the four space standard has practical benefits compared to the alternatives. Um, using eight spaces per level of indentation usually results in code that quickly runs up against the line length limit, whereas two spaces for each level of indentation often isn't enough to make the indentation easy to see. Now, aside from indentation, there are several rules for putting spaces within a line of code. Let's go over them right now. The first one is put a single space between operators and identifiers. And in this example, I'm just using a line of code from a hangman program that I made. And here you can see between all of the operators like this plus operator or this assignment operator and in between the identifiers that is the variable names I've put a single space here and here and here and here and here and here and even here as well this would be a good way to add spacing to make sure that the text doesn't run up against each other one way that you wouldn't want to write code is like this Because even though this is syntactically valid Python code, it becomes really hard to distinguish the individual pieces inside this line of code. Next, don't put spaces before separators, but do put a single space after separators. And by separators, I often mean a comma. So for example, if we created a spam function right here, then created a list called weights right here. The separators in this case are commas. We don't want to put spaces before the comma, but we do want to put a space after the comma. And so that's, for example, here in our list of parameters, but also here in the list of items that go inside this list value. And what we don't want to do is have them all bunched up together like this or even having spaces between uh, before the separators. Next, don't put spaces before or after periods. Now, Python allows you to insert spaces before and after periods, marking the beginning of a Python attribute, but you should avoid doing so. By not placing spaces there, you emphasize the connection between the object and its attribute. For example, I have a string object right here, and I want to call the upper method on it. 
Notice how there's no space before or after the period. And this shows the connection between this string and the method that we're calling on that string. Otherwise, your code would sort of look like this, which looks very strange. It's hard to see that these two elements are connected to each other, even though this code still works. Uh, the next rule is don't put spaces after a function, method, or container name. Now the most common way that I see this is after function or method names and before the opening parenthesis. You don't want to have any space between the function name and the opening parenthesis right here. So this would be good style. However, this would not be good style. And sort of for the same reason as before, you really want to have the parentheses, which indicate a function call, and the function name to be right next to each other. Otherwise, this looks like two separate items that are not connected to each other. However, this code will still work, but this is considered the proper style. Don't put spaces after opening brackets or before closing brackets. Now when we write variable names that are list or dictionaries and usually have some sort of opening or closing bracket, you don't want to have spaces before the opening bracket. So this is still syntactically valid, but you do want it to look like this without anything between the uh, list or dictionary and then the square brackets, sort of for the same reason as not putting spaces in between the function name and the opening parentheses. Don't put spaces after opening brackets or before closing brackets. If we go back to our code here, which we used for the uh, separator example, you do want to have these parentheses and these square brackets to be right up against the first item or the last item. You don't want to have spaces here or here, or have spaces here or here. Instead, the general style is to have those right up against the first and last items. And next, this might seem like a very minor thing, but it does improve readability. Go ahead and put two spaces before end of line comments. And I'll show you what I mean. If we have some code right here that says hello, normally you could put a, an end of line comment right here. Now one space is nice. It separates what part is code from what part is the comment, but go ahead and put two spaces here to further increase that separation. It makes it a lot easier, especially when you have a lot of code on the screen at one time, to see this is the part that is code and that you should pay attention to for bugs, and then this is the comment that explains it. And the two spaces there really does help improve that distinction. You don't want to have just one space, or you don't want to have uh, zero spaces either. Two spaces is, is a pretty good amount to have. And next, let's talk about vertical spacing. Vertical spacing is the placement of blank lines between lines of code. Just as a new paragraph in a book keeps the sentences from forming a giant wall of text, a vertical spacing can group certain lines of code together and separate those groups from one another. Now, I'm going to go ahead and write up a, sh a small example here. Let's create a class called example class. And let's put a couple of example methods in here as well. And maybe just also add an example function as well. And so if we do need to have indentation that's required by Python, but we could have no vertical spacing whatsoever. All of these lines are bunched up together. But to make these a bit more readable, it's good to add a single space in between methods and also a, a couple of blank lines at the after the end of a class. Now this is something that the black automatic code formatter tool can do for you. However, what black can't do is decide where the blank line should go within a single function or method. For example, 
Let's look at this email validator class in the validators.py file in the Django web app framework. This is a very popular open source web app framework. Now it's not necessary for you to understand what this code does. Just look at the spacing in between. So this is all in one method and technically all of these lines could be bunched together. But notice how there's a blank line right here and a blank line right here and a blank line right here that naturally forms groups of lines such as these two lines, which are grouped together, and then this line, which is separate from what this code does. And then we have a couple other spaces above and below this line, grouping it together. And then we have this code, which is all doing stuff related to one another. So all of these have no blank lines inserted into them, but they are all grouped together. And we're doing all of this without having comments everywhere. There's only one comment in this entire method. Now where to put blank lines is probably something you'll get better at deciding with experience, but don't be afraid to insert blank lines just to break up the code together. You don't want to have it all just running together without any breaks whatsoever. That can make it hard to distinguish what parts of code are related to each other inside this method. Now, one of Python's lesser known features is that you can use a semicolon to separate multiple statements onto a single line. So I could have code like this, what is your name? And then we call the input function to ask that. What's also valid to do in Python is to use a semicolon, and then we can have these two lines of code on the same line in the source code file. Now this is valid to do, but in general you want to avoid doing this. Oftentimes it just results in lines of code that are very wide and can extend past the edge of the editor, making it hard to read on a screen. And in fact, the black code formatting tool will automatically take these lines and separate them. Uh, similarly, you can import multiple modules with a single import statement by separating them with commas. This will import the math, OS, and sys modules all on one line. However, what's recommended is to go ahead and have separate import statements, one for each module. Uh, this will come up later when we talk about version control systems, but this is so that when you add or remove a module, it's a lot easier to see which modules have been removed because it just points to an, an individual line that that module is used on. Now again, all of these guidelines are a matter of style. They're optional, but it's important to develop these good habits because in general, this is how professional software developers will write their code. If you ever want to look up more of these little tips, you can do a web search for style guide, Often they'll be for a particular programming language, so you could look up Python style guide. And different open source projects or software companies will even have their own style guide. So you could look up the Django style guide or the uh, Google style guide or Facebook Python style guide. But even easier is to just go ahead and use an automatic code formatting tool such as Black, which we'll describe in the next lesson.